Welcome back to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. I'm Tim Farmer. We're ready on this Memorial Day. We're going to have a show going for you. So with hey, 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 what? Hey, Excuse hey, me, I'm doing a show no, here. Wait, 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 wait. I got the shows on. You're not Tim Farmer. I am Tim Farmer. No, you're not. It's on the Tim Farmer show. It's right there. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. No, you're not. It's on TV. Yes, you are. Okay, I'm not. I knew it. Man, you had me going for 15 seconds. I was going to look at my ID <laughs> to make sure. Are you Tim Farmer? No. No, I'm not accused Tim Farmer. Uh, whatever. This is Mac. We're at Elmwood Stock Farm. Beautiful day. Awesome, awesome. You know what? It's Memorial Day weekend. You know what that means? Let me ask you if you knew this. How did Memorial Day get started? You have any idea? I don't. You think about, you know, let's go back to 1866. In Waterloo, New York, it started being called Decoration Day. They would go around and people would decide to honor fallen soldiers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Later on, World War I, I think that's where the Decoration Day started coming in. And I think officially, I think it was in the 60s or 70s, they finally made it a holiday. But it was to officially honor fallen, fallen U.S. Forward. soldiers and decorate, put stuff on their graves. Right. So, so that's what it's all about. And want to thank everybody for the service out there. But want to thank you for having yeah. us out here. Oh, great. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful farm. What a spring. After last year, this season, it's just been awesome compared to last year where we broke all the records on rainfall. So this year, we're gonna get a little rain, get some work done, get a little more rain. So getting, you already got some hay up this year. Well, we are on the road today and we are doing a, a brand new segment with you next weekend. This week, we're gonna look at, because a lot of people are gonna be cooking outside, camping, so on right. and so forth, we're gonna look right. at some of our favorite cast iron cooking. We're gonna right. start that in just a second. But next week, we got a great show with you coming up. You're gonna see us visiting your place to see all the stuff that you have growing. Yep. The one thing that sticks in my mind about you, you were talking with your daughter in the garden and she was asking you why you're putting poison mm -hmm. on, on the food. How long ago right. was that? She's 35, so she uh, was 33 years ago, 32 wow. years ago. Wasn't that an epiphany? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't have a good answer for it, right? Wow. You know what? Today, we can know where our food comes from. That's why right. we talk with you. That's why we encourage people to talk with folks like you. We want to know where our food comes in. Right. And we want to know where it's from, what's on it, what's not on it, so on and so forth. That being said, you imposter, you tried to sneak in here and just <laughs> well, take the show hey, and everything. I'm it's, it really wasn't very hard. <laughs> Did you just walk right no, up? Uh, yeah. But let's start out and show you some of our favorite cast iron cooking segments. Anywhere we go, anytime we talk to folks, we ask them what their favorite thing is and they say the cast iron cooking. They love right. that stuff. I'm looking forward to it myself. So here's our number one favorite dish. So here's where we're gonna start, Mrs. Farm. We're gonna take okay. our little quail. Now, I didn't clean these. If I had cleaned them, I would have not split the breast open. And see they're kind of pulled apart here. Right. See how that, that oh, yeah. I wouldn't normally do that. I would want to leave the skin on and the breast open. But being that we have some twine and we can kind of keep things together, let's take these onions okay. and cut them up long ways into like four quarters. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is salt and pepper our little guys. You know, I remember when I was a kid, the sound of a Bob White quail was ubiquitous. Everywhere you went, you would hear them. Everywhere, all the time. And I would call them in. I had this little pattern and I would listen to them and I would, I would hear a male. So I would wait 10, 12 seconds and I would call again. I would do the same thing he was doing. He'd get closer and closer and closer. Next thing you know, you see one come out of the field. There's see dinner. how I did that? <laughs> yeah, that was Can good. you walk like a crow? No, I can't. You do that well. No, I didn't shoot him. That would have been illegal because that was in the spring. So what we're going to do is just we're going to take these and we're going to brown them. I'm going to put them in some hot oil. All right. There's a little bit of pre-cooking going on here too. So people might ask, so how do you adjust your temperature when you're cooking over an open flame? You move the pan around where it's the hottest or coolest. You want to get more temperature on it, you pull it up right where the flame is the highest. If you want to back off a little bit, you slide it back. It's that simple. Normally, 
you could do this all in one dish. Mm -hmm. And we had a nice fire going just to kind of keep warm because it's going to get chilly out here. And I wanted to see the open pan. You could do it this way. You can use two pans. I don't mind cleaning two pans. Those look like you could eat them now. They look good. Oh, they do. They're not quite <laughs> done yet. We're going to finish them up. All Now let's dress their little selves out. So we're going to take this onion. Kind of stuff it in, in there. Like that? Yep. Now we're going to tie his little legs up. That's just to hold him together and keep all that flavor in. Keep that right. onion in there. He's done. And again, our idea here. Now see, those have kind of sealed up. We want that chest cavity to stay together as much as we can. You they look cute. Gotta do that. They, do. they, look, they cute. look cute. All right, so we're going to take some dates and we're going to pit them. Okay. And we're just going to cut those up into six or seven pieces. We're going to have these on standby. Now, you could use cranberries. I normally would use cranberries. But, but these are yummy. These are good for you. How do you want these cut? Just in fours? Yeah, just in, I don't know, five or six pieces. Okay. That's going to give it a little sweet, isn't it? It's going to give it a little sweet. I like that. All right, there's your dates. All right, now let's take our leeks. We're not going to waste those onions either. All right. Now leeks have a nice mild taste. They're not, they're not, they're oniony, but they're not strong. And these really complement this a lot. A lot of people use leeks when they're making quail. Because you want to cut these up a little bit finer. All right. So I have leeks, we got onions, and we have dates. It's date night. Oh, that's sweet. And we're going to drop these leeks and the rest of these onions. Now remember that our little quail were in here and all those little pieces and all that fat from their skin is flavoring these as well. I'm going to take these over here in just a minute. Once they soften up just a little bit more, they absorb all the flavor that's in this pan. I'm going to take them over to my Dutch oven. And it's 350 degrees, which is? 17 and 8. 17 and 8, correct. Now, I guess this is a good time to tell you about our sister page. If you want to come over and see Cast Iron Cooking with Tim Farmer. Now, this is mainly a discussion page. So, the discussion is going to be, y'all, and I want recipes. We're going to post our recipes, but uh, we have a lot of folks signing up over there. It's our sister page. And also, let's remind you, if you have not become a member of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, what would you do, Mr. Farmer? I'd hit like. That's it? Yeah, that's, that's all you do. That's too easy. Okay, we're going to take a cup of chicken broth, and we recently got some apple cider. Now I'm going to take a little bit of apple cider and put it in there. I'm going to take my leeks off the fire. I wish you could smell these onions and leeks right now. It's ridiculous. They smell amazing. Isn't that something? Yes. That's all. You can't go wrong with that. So we're going to cover this up and let it get, let that cook down just a little bit. Then I'm going to drop in my bouquet garni. All right, here's our reveal. Oh, wow. Oh, me? You smell that. That looks amazing. Now, our little bouquet garni, which is a fancy way for saying a bunch of weeds tied together. Yeah. <laughs> you smell that thyme. You oh, smell wow. that thyme coming out of there. This is what the finished product looked like. Now, aren't you glad we browned that in that skillet? Yeah, they look wonderful. Isn't that beautiful? Let's eat. All right, first, let's take a bite of our. Wow. <laughs> Mmm, that's so good. Look at that leeking. Those are good. I love leeks. They're wonderful. A little bit of rice. You can have a karoot. That is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, it's indescribable. It's subtle. That's but the good. flavor that each animal has. I'm going to have a karoot. Now, something you do to your rice, which mm -hmm. I like. For texture, you put some almond slivers I in did. there. I did. I put a lot. That. Yeah, I put some carrots and celery today. Sometimes we put cranberries. We put, cranberries, cranberries, we yeah. put them in there. I love Smells these good. leaves. Since the dawn of mankind, since man started settling in one spot, they started domesticating rabbits. Mm -hmm. And up until the last 50, 100 years, that was a regular source of protein. Now, when people started making cartoons and regular feature-length films with animals speaking, uh -huh. <laughs> became popular. Um, you know, rabbit was a regular part of people's meals, whether right. you hunted it or it was domesticated. Right. It is delicious. Yes, it's it is. healthy. Um, it's not that fatty at all. It's very good for you. What a good source of protein. Now, what is this? We got from Mac, and we'll go visit him later. But that's garlic. It looks like an onion, but it's garlic. 
I guess you could call that a garlic start or before it pods it's out. Not... That's it looks like an onion. Wow, it smells amazing. It smells like garlic. Well, it is. It's because, as, as it's he garlic. said, it it's is garlic. garlic. <laughs> now, tonight we're going to use a cast iron Dutch oven for our rabbit recipe. Now, we're going to start out with our cast iron in a skillet up okay. on top. What I'm going to need is probably two of these onions. Okay. And instead of cutting them in little pieces, let's cut them in rings. Okay. Thin rings. We've got some fresh mushrooms. And we decided to go with shiitake on this. We're going to tie us together our little bit of parsley, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of oregano, and we're going to make a wonderful rabbit dish, quick and easy. Not that quick, an hour maybe, total okay. time. Now, again, rabbit is delicious. If you don't have any rabbit and you want to do this with chicken, you can do this just as well. But right up the road, our buddy at Ghost Mountain Rabbitry furnished us with some rabbit. We went up there and bought it and we traded around. I'm telling you what, there's nothing like fresh rabbit. It's absolutely delicious. I've never had it. Tell you what I'd like, Nikki, if you will, okay. if you'll cut me up some celery. All right. I'm gonna get me a skillet going here in a minute with some butter in it. Third to a half a stick of butter. So you get a bunch of onions and some celery. And let's take a little bit of that garlic, cut up in here too. All right. A little bit of our garlic. At this point, Nikki, if you'll get my 12 inch Dutch oven mm -hmm. over here, I'm gonna lay some coals down, start getting it hot. We're going. 400 degrees today, which is 10 on the bottom, 19 on the top. All right, so now, to go ahead and heat things up a bit, we're gonna go ahead and, ahead and take most of a beer. Now this is New Belgium Amber Ale. So we're gonna go ahead and get our liquid hot in, I don't know, a little over a cup of chicken broth, and if you don't do alcohol, don't worry. The alcohol will cook out of that. I promise you won't stumble down the stairs after you've had your rabbit. Let's go back to our onions, check them out. They're getting close. At the last minute, we're going to toss those mushrooms in there and let them get a little, little bit cooked. Now, Nikki, if you will, I'm going to lift the top. If you'll dump that into here, we'll let them start cooking. Right now, right here, we're just going to take a little bit of thyme, mostly thyme, a little bit of oregano, a little bit of parsley. Okay, drop our bouquet garni. Boom. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of salt. Well, let's actually put a lot of salt and a lot of pepper. That's good. Uh, well, a little bit more no salt. And some pepper. A little salt and a little pepper. Let's just dredge those parts. Look what a good looking piece of Yum. meat. You can't tell me that's not delicious. All right, same pan. Let's not dirty anything up. We don't have to. All right, lightly dredge these in flour. Drop it in. All right, now we're gonna take about two tablespoons of stone ground mustard and a pinch of brown sugar. Well, the, the wonderful thing about this is, is when this is done, you're gonna take your juices because you are the queen of gravy. That's right. And you like your potatoes. So we're gonna make a gravy out of this remaining juice oh, yeah. in the end. Now, something I like to use to give it a little celery flavor, it's called nature seasoning. I'm gonna put just a hair of that in. And to add to that good, rich, salty, stocky flavor, I'm gonna drop a chicken bouillon cube in there as well. Come back and check my rabbit, see where it's at. Yum. Now we're gonna get this nice and brown and started. And it's gonna finish the rest away in our 12 inch lodge Dutch oven. Look at there, we're cooking. I'm gonna take my rabbit out and lay in here. And I'm gonna check this in about 45 minutes, but I'm anticipating about an hour's worth of cooking. And because it's sat there and cooked a while, I'm gonna reinforce some of my charcoal. Look at that. Now we're gonna leave that as it is, it's done. I had a friend on Facebook the other day who was talking about fried cabbage and just ding, 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 ding with rabbit, are you I've kidding me? I've never had it, I can't wait. There's nothing to it, old timey thing. We're getting our bacon going, okay? We got about six pieces of bacon, six, seven pieces of bacon. And we're gonna fry this up till it's done and get some bacon grease. Now that's the same pan we fried rabbit in, it doesn't matter, a little bit of that flour in there, Makes we're only good. thicken it yeah. up later. While the bacon's going, we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take this head of cabbage, we're gonna take the first couple layers off. We're gonna cut it up into small 
smaller pieces so we can fry it evenly. We're gonna take this onion, cut it up into small rings, kind of like what we did for the rabbit. Okay. We're gonna take the bacon aside once it's done in there, leave most of the grease in there, and we're gonna turn this cabbage over and over and over. Now we're gonna take a little shot, apple cider vinegar, some brown sugar, and the brown sugar gives a little sweet. Now we're gonna come back with some nature seasoning. Not that much. And drop a cube of chicken bouillon in there. When we cut all that up in there, we just keep mixing that over, turning over until it gets, the, the leaves are very malleable. Okay. And then we got us something special. Okay, look at that. Cabbage is done. It smells delicious. Nikki's gonna take this, put it in another dish. We're gonna use the same skillet to make the gravy with. And we're about to get there. That's gonna be falling off the bone. All right, and you remember the simple way to make gravy. Usually I have cornstarch. This time we had flour, which is, works as good. Cornstarch is my favorite, but I do equal parts of flour and water. Mix that up with a fork, and we're just gonna add that in and stir it up, and it's gonna go quick. You're talking boom. Boom, we got gravy. Now look at that. Yum. If that ain't country, you can wow. take it to the bank or something like that. That's what they say. Look at that. It's falling off the bone. Oh, look at that skin mm. right there. That is good. I love your gravy. Oh, I like that. I love your. I gotta try this cabbage. I've never had this before. And You've I love, never had fried cabbage. No, but I love cabbage. You love that, don't you? Mm-hmm. Oh wow, well, I could eat that. This is one of my new favorite meals. Yum. You wanna start raising rabbits? Maybe, no, let's just buy them, it's easier. Mm, true. Let's go to John. I'm telling you, it's just delicious. Rips now we're delicious. starving, we had a lot to do on the farm today, but man, oh man, it was worth the wait. And you can tell it's falling off the mm. bone here. When you see that bone sticking out there and it slid off, it's time to eat. Monkey bread. Mm. Duh. Everybody does monkey yeah. bread, but you know what? We haven't done it yet. Somebody asked us not too long ago, yeah. when are you going to do monkey bread? Well, here's the deal. You can go the traditional route. we got a great pizza dough that we've, we've struggled to find a good pizza dough. Right. Now, the difference in the online recipe for the pizza dough in this is we use sesame oil in our pizza dough. I don't know. It gives a nice sweet good. taste. Yeah. It's really good. It's really good. But uh, if you want to look up this particular recipe, our dough recipe, it's flour, it's yeast. we got to fold it and do all that kind of stuff. If if somebody yelled at us one time for doing um, canned biscuits, when you're camping, camping I don't yeah, want to, yeah, it's easier. You can take this and you can do this, or you can do, use canned biscuits. You can take your canned biscuits and you can wad them up in a little ball. You want to be about half the size of a golf ball. Yeah. About like that. What you want to do is take your, and it's just that simple, but take your, take your little ball of dough, whether you make it out of yeast or whether you go to the store about right and get you some canned biscuits. If I'm camping, I want easy. So let's take, oh, probably gonna need with this much a half a cup of sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar. And I don't know, I'll show you how much. Your cinnamon? With our cinnamon, we're gonna probably want two and a half tablespoons easy. That looked like two and a half tablespoons. I don't wanna it breathe it. It does. I'm gonna start sneezing and never stop. It smells so good. It does smell good. This is so easy too. So let's take two or three balls and put them in there and see how they pick up. Yeah. Now here's what they're going to look go. like. Now I'm just going to take them and set them in the pan one at a time until we cover the bottom of the pan. So we're going to lay those out on the bottom of our 10 inch. Look how beautiful that looks. A whole stick of butter. I like this. A whole stick of butter. Or whatever it takes. Cover the top of this. I think a whole if stick. If it took two sticks, hey, it'd be two sticks. At least. We're not messing around today. We're hungry. You remember making donuts? Yeah, as a kid. Just kidding. Not too far from this, was it? Mm -mm. Deep fry. <laughs> Yum. Now, the great thing about this, if you're going to go, and think about it, a smaller pan. Right. You want to go 400 degrees, 375, 400 mm -hmm. degrees. What do you think it would be? The same, right? The same. 17 and 8. Because the pan's smaller. Pan's smaller. Okay. We need to get it hot. All right. That being said, Yum. we're getting close here.
Monkey bread. I can't wait to try post, that. Post one out there, Miss Farmer. Oh, I know it's hot. Yow! Oh, look <laughs> at that. That's a beautiful. Yow! It's very hot. How is it? Like a cinnamon roll. That's delicious. <laughs> if you want to, you could drizzle some confectioner sugar over top of that. Oh, more butter. Oh, mm, that's good. Mm, mm. Wow. That's delicious. And hot. Mmm. 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 Mm. <laughs> Look how the bottom's all nice and crispy. It's a beautiful thing. That's good. That was fun and fairly quick. That was. Now what you're seeing is just about real time. It went mm -hmm. a little longer because we had to set up the corn and everything. And you can see the lights change. The afternoon has passed into uh, early afternoon. That's right. It's really hot. Mm -hmm. but look at this wonderful thing we have set out in front of us, done in three stacked lodge pans. Now I want to eat it all if we can. Cast iron cooking, cowboy cooking, whatever you want yeah. to call it, is absolutely fun. I have a lot of questions here lately about how do you clean your cast iron. It's very simple. How do you clean, season your cast iron? Say you're done. Say you've cooked eggs that morning, eggs and bacon on your cast iron skillet. And it's, it's set for a while. So what do you want to do to get it reseasoned? Basically get it over a hot fire. Have you some water, hot water, not necessarily boiling, but you don't want to take cold water and put on a hot skillet or you can crack that skillet and that's bad. You don't want that. Pour you a little bit of water in there. I like a flat wooden spoon. Take and move everything to the side. Wipe it out with a rag. Take you some more water if you have to. Come back with your sponge. Get everything off that you can. Once you've gotten everything out of there, wipe the pan down, then bring in your olive oil, put it all over that pan, set it aside, you're good to go. If you want to go to our Facebook page, it's really hard to get on. What would you do if you wanted to go to our Facebook page? Hit like. Boom, that's all you gotta do. I think we're over 60,000 folks on there oh, we wow. talk to, they have wow. fun with, and they need to go to your site as well. What's your Facebook page? Elmwood Stock Farm. And is it really hard to get on there? Hit like. Boom, just like that. Now, if you wanted to go somewhere and find out more recipes, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, you go there all the time. I'm absolutely yeah. certain to get recipes, don't you? Yeah, oh yeah. Timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, you hit that red subscribe button, so every time there's something new, it'll come right to you. That'll so Mike, good. it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. See you next week. 2319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.